When Noah was around three years old, I was driving and had my daughter with me, and he kept looking at me in the rearview mirror trying to get my attention. I was totally tuned out, totally ignoring him. I just thought he was being a kid because they'll say mom, mom, mom a dozen times. All of a sudden, my three-year-old son glares at me in the mirror and he says, damn it, Hanny, listen, listen to me. To me. I had to pull over because my toddler just swore at me and to hear that name come out of my son's mouth really shook me up. I was at work and Trini called me and she was crying and I said, what is wrong? And she said, you're not gonna believe what just happened. The last time I heard someone call me Hanny would have been before my brother's passing. No one else called her Hanny, not her friends, not her dad, not me. It was a name that Craig had for Trini and called her that. My brother died in 1993 and Noah was born in 1998, so there's no way anyone would have told Noah what my nickname was as a child. Hanny! When he said, damn it, Hanny, it was crystal clear, his voice lowered, and it sounded a little spooky. Listen to me! the hard noises in the back of his throat, like guh, kuh, those things he could not say. So for him to actually make a sound with a guh in the back of his throat was very shocking to me. Listen to me! I don't even know what was going through my mind. I actually started to shake and I cried. And while I'm doing that, my daughter's in the back seat and she said, why are you calling mommy Hanny? And he looked at her and he said, because she is Hanny. And he looked back at me and he said, you know you're Hanny. When Noah was around four, Noah's dad and I had taken the kids out to eat and we had already ordered our food. We were just sitting there having normal conversation. The kids were drawing on the kids menu and Noah abruptly stands up on the booth and holds his arms up in a big circle. And he said, when I was here before, I died. And I asked him, when you were where? And he said, here, Mom, here. And I said, on Earth? He said, yes, on Earth. And he took his hand and he said he was in a car driving like this on a road and that his car wrecked, caught on fire, and that he died. This really made the hair on my neck stand up because that's exactly how my brother died five years before Noah was even born. The night my brother passed away, he had gone to the state fair with some of his friends to go to a concert. So at 3.20 a.m. on Sunday, I woke up, just woke up out of a dead sleep. I looked out my window and the car was not there, so I knew he wasn't home and I couldn't go back to sleep. The next morning, the telephone rang. It was Craig and Trini's father, my ex-husband, and he told me that Craig had had this accident and had died. It was just, it was awful. It was a single car crash and the, the car had rolled. He had been ejected from the car. The car had burned. I learned later that Trini and I and Craig's father had all woken up at 3.20 a.m. We were in three different locations and we all woke up at the same time because we believe that's the exact time that he died. I know there was definitely drinking going on, and I know there was some sort of discussion at some point. Somebody had tried to take his keys away from him. He got quite belligerent and said, no, I'm going, and would not let them take his keys, and he left. Losing my brother, even though it's been over 20 years ago, still deeply affects me to this day. By the time Noah was around three years old, I didn't really talk about my brother a lot. I'm not sure at that point he even knew that I had a brother. I don't remember anyone talking about Craig's car crash in front of Noah as a young child. 
When Noah talked about being here before and hearing him recount his own physical death was pretty freaky. We thought we had put the past behind us when my brother passed, but I started to believe more and more that Noah was reincarnated. My mom wasn't so convinced, but that changed one night when Noah said something to her that he could have never known. When Noah was seven, he was having a sleepover at my house. I was getting ready to tuck him in, and he looked up at me and said, Nana, I need Froggy. And I stopped in my tracks, and I said, what do you mean, Froggy? And he goes, you know, the Froggy I always sleep with. I'm in disbelief. And I said, what color is Froggy? He's yellow, Nana, you know Froggy. All of a sudden, I'm having flashbacks of Craig. He always slept with Froggy. Froggy is a handmade stuffed animal made by my sister, Craig's aunt. She gave it to him when he was six or so, and he just always loved it and slept with it. I had, of course, kept certain favorite things of my kids. Froggy being one of them, but it hadn't been something that I brought out for my grandkids to sleep with or play with. I was thinking, am I really hearing what I'm hearing? So I went to the closet and had to get it down off the top shelf. And I said, are you talking about this Froggy? And his eyes got really big and he broke into this big smile and took it from me and hugged it and said, there's my froggy. I was immediately a little weepy because it brought back so many memories. I mean, we couldn't go anywhere without that froggy. Craig took it everywhere. Noah had never seen this frog before. It had never been talked about before. That, that was the moment for me because now it was something really tangible in my house. That was the first time that I thought to myself, there's something really special about this boy. As much as I miss my brother, Noah was my priority and I wanted to make sure what happened to my brother did not happen to Noah. My mom helped me find a very good therapist to help Noah with the anger that he was feeling inside. And in some strange connected way, I felt like maybe I was helping my brother as well. Noah's 16 now. He's really grown into a really balanced, human being. My name's Noah. I do believe I was my uncle. The fact that I was my uncle it just amazes me, and I think it's pretty cool. Being different and having a story behind it. I feel like the memories are carried over with me, because there's no way I would be able to know all those stories, like my mom's nickname. Honey! Too young to know any of that. Never met my uncle. So there's no way I would be able to know all those. Makes me feel like I'm getting like a second chance. I think the reason that he came back as me is because he messed up and he wants me to make it right and carry on from what he left over. I think that there was troubled times for Craig and I think this is a way for him to heal. His soul is being healed and Noah is learning from Craig's soul and moving forward in a more positive way. Noah's driving now. I think he understands there's a lot of responsibility with that. Every decision can impact his life and somebody else's life, but he's very careful, he's very cautious. So far, he's made really good decisions behind the wheel. I like my friends, you know, they got stories about how family members died from drinking and driving, but I feel like I've like been there and I feel like I've been through it. With my uncle's mistakes, it's just not another story. I feel like my uncle did come back to my mom as me because they were very close and my uncle watched out for my mom. So I feel like I'm gonna still do the same, watch out for her and help her with everything that she needs and do what I can and make sure I don't go down the path that he went down. <laughs>